Welcome to the channel. On today's episode of Put Some Prep in Your Step, we're going to talk about self-joins and so a use case on how to apply it. Um, this is something that once you understand the technique, you can modify it for your uses, um, but let's dive into it. So you can see I've got a really simple data set here. Uh, it's just uh, some ticket data. You know, a lot of us work with you know, customer service tickets or support tickets, things like that. So the scenario here is uh, we need to be able to identify when a customer is opening a ticket within 72 hours of a previous ticket that they opened. Um, and what we're calling this is, you know, an unsuccessful resolution, right? If they had to open another ticket within 72 hours, um, that's just telling us that the first resolution probably didn't really solve the problem, but we need to be able to credit that, you know, unsuccessful resolution to the agent that worked the previous ticket. So for example, if you look at customer ending in 788, they had a ticket that was opened on April 20th, but then the next day they opened uh, another ticket. But we don't want Marielle to get that that bad mark. That would go to Sanford. All right, so I've connected to my data. I'm going to add two steps, a clean step and a join step. Now, since I'm trying to look at for each ticket that was created, what was the ticket directly preceding it and the agent that was working that ticket. Um, I'm going to join the data back to itself to get that previous row, current row comparison. This is just one of the ways to use the self join. Um, there's a lot of different ways to apply it. But once you sort of understand how to problem solve using it, there's a lot of great things you can do with prep. Um, so. Since I'm doing that previous row comparison, I'm going to rename the fields here and add a previous to the name. Okay, so now that I've added previous to the name, I'm going to join the data back to itself. And for my join condition, I'm actually going to change the color here to make it easier for me. Uh, for my join condition, I want the creation timestamp from the left table to be greater than the previous resolution timestamp. I want all of the records from the left table, and then I want to join as well on customer ID. So now I can see here, um, if we're using uh, customer 609 as the example, uh, since my ticket data is sequential, 306 was the first ticket they created, uh, then the ticket right after that was 312, and then we can see here, the previous ticket was 306, but then the third ticket they created is capturing both of the previous tickets but I really just want to look at that ticket directly before the one in, in question. And so what we're going to do is we're going to aggregate to get that most previous record. Now I know my ticket data is sequential, so I can use the, the ticket ID and get the max ticket ID. Um, but if the, the data that you're working with isn't sequential, um, if there's other fields in your time in your uh, data, you can still accomplish that. Now, for us, the other field that we could go off of is the creation timestamp. Instead of getting the max ticket ID, we could get the max creation timestamp. Um, so I'm going to add two separate aggregations so we can see what that looks like. I'm going to add a clean step here before the aggregation. Uh, just to get rid of this customer ID duplicated field, and I usually like working off of a clean step. And so now I'm going to add my aggregation. And there's a couple of different ways you could do it. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to pull in all of the fields I need into my aggregation step because anything that you don't pull in, you lose when you go through the rest of the flow. You could, again, do more self joins and, and pull those data fields back to itself. Since this is a simpler data set, I'm just going to pull those into the aggregate step and move forward from there. So let's say uh, the main thing I want to group by is our ticket ID. I'm going to pull in these other fields as well, agent ID, agent name, customer ID, uh, creation timestamp, and resolution timestamp. And then I just want my previous ticket ID, but I want the maximum. So now I'm only getting that ticket directly preceding it. 
Now, I still need to know what the previous agent was working that ticket, but I can't use the maximum agent ID because the agent ID field wouldn't be working sequentially like that in the same manner. Um, but before we get into that, if your data isn't sequential, uh, let's look at how we get that same concept by using the creation date. So we'll create another aggregation, pull in ticket ID, agent ID, name, customer ID, creation timestamp, resolution timestamp, and we'll say the previous creation timestamp. I want the maximum of that. Now timestamps um, are usually tend to be pretty unique, so we could join now back onto that timestamp to see what's going on here. So back to my original aggregation with the ticket ID. I still need to know the agent here that was working this ID. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a clean step and I'm gonna join the data back to itself again. Let me just add this up here just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. And so I want my, let's see, this is my orange table, so I want the ticket ID here to equal my ticket ID here. And actually, let's say I want my previous ticket ID over here. And I want all of the records from my aggregate step still. So now we can see for ticket 312, it looks like Sanford worked 312. Let me validate in my aggregate or in my step over here. So for 312, Sanford did work it. Okay, so far so good. Now let's see um, 312. So it looks like Sanford worked 312, but Alicia worked ticket 306. Let's go back over here. So ticket 306 was Alicia. Okay, so now we've got it. Now we've got the direct previous ticket and the agent who's worked it. Um, so now what we can do is we're gonna create uh, another aggregate step, or actually we're gonna create a clean step first because now I need to be able to see, now that I've got that previous row up to my current row, I've got the creation, timestamps here, the previous ones. So now what I can do is I can create my calculation to see um, when was this ticket created versus when the last ticket was resolved. So let's say hours since the last ticket. Let's say date diff, minutes, or sorry, hours, resolution timestamp, one dash one, that's our previous one and uh, creation timestamp. So I wanna see the hours in between this resolution timestamp and this creation. Okay, so there we go. Let me go ahead and move that over here. And so this ticket or this customer, they've created two tickets, but it's outside of that 72 hour time frame that we were looking at. Uh, so, but these three, these are all what we're classifying as unsuccessful resolutions. So it looks like Alicia had one and Sanford had two. But we also need to compare that to the total number of tickets they resolved. So let's add two steps here. The first one, we're gonna say, let's pull in our agent ID, our agent name, and then let's look at the number of tickets that they that they resolved. So count distinctive tickets. So this is the total number of tickets they resolved. So it's called total resolutions. And we're gonna add another aggregate step here. And we're gonna pull in the agent ID dash one, because this is our previous agent. And uh, let's go ahead and use ticket ID dash one two and we'll do account distinct. And so what's that agent name? Okay, so again, it's okay. So Sanford had a two, Alicia had one, Serena had one. Okay, so let's call this unsuccessful 
resolutions. And let's just verify real quick. So Serena Brown did have one, uh, but oh, here's, here's the catch. Uh, this shouldn't be counted. So let's actually create one more field and we'll say unsuccessful resolutions. say if hours since is greater than or less than 72 then one and okay so this is the real field we want to capture for the unsuccessful resolution so let me go back here remove this one and pull in the actual unsuccessful resolutions or change this field get rid of this again Pull in unsuccessful resolutions. Okay, there we go, that looks better. So let's go back again and confirm. Okay, so Serena did have work on a ticket that this customer created, but it was not an unsuccessful one. So there should be two for Sanford, one for Alicia. There we go, we've got two for Sanford and one for Alicia. And so now I can join these together. And then I want all of the records from this one since this is looking at total resolutions and so now we can see uh, okay let me pull this here let me get rid of the duplicate fields here okay so Alicia had two total resolutions and one unsuccessful resolution and then Sanford had three total resolutions and two unsuccessful resolutions this is what I was after and you know so taking that data set Using the self joins here, it's really powerful. It's a key to being able to use prep in solving a lot of your data problems and putting a lot of that processing into the, the data pipeline and taking it out of desktop. That's gonna make your workbooks so much more efficient and it's gonna make your data process so much more efficient. Um, again, uh, I would leave the calculation j just get the fields that you need to do your calculation and then I usually save that final step and that final aggregation for desktop because that's where you're going to get a lot of the flexibility you don't want to over aggregate your data and then when you throw it in the desktop you've lost a lot of that flexibility and where desktop is most powerful um, other than that, you know, again, if there is other topics that you'd like to see me uh, go over, or if there was a different way that you would approach this one, let me know, give me some feedback, um, and I hope to see you in the next one.